last week we were just discussing about uh, so different so differences so how you can distinguish plants so based on the root system and also based on the stem styles right we just learn about few uh, few type of stems not all but we have learned few so let me remind them and begin so some uh, stems are underground some stems are underground right so normally stems are aerial stems you can see aerial or sub aerial way that means when you see in the earth surface so you can see the stems so that is the normal thing but uh, here we learn about some underground stems example i think you can remember ginger like thing so it's having underground uh, stems and then so we also learn about propagative stems for example you can see this images it shows go to color on the pelia uh, and uh, this uh, ambula ambilia and all so these are some examples where new plants new plants can be generated or new living plants can be generated using these stems but these stems are actually sub aerial so you can say that sometimes you can say this is aerial but it is not really it's sub aerial it means like it's so these are it seems like creepers right so it's running uh, running on top of the surface and <coughs> it forms from the stem it forms new plants so these are called propagative stems propagative stems so it can generate so actually stem is one of the main way of asexual reproduction of plants uh, sexual reproduction happens through these flowers and also uh, seeds fruits etc but here stems are very good example for a sexual reproduction of plants so it can reproduce generate on kind using this propagative stems and so these are some uh, another examples these are called suckers so that is also you can either say this is subaerial uh, or it is underground right why so because like in this is banana so what you see is actually a form of it is by wrapping the leaves it's not real stem the stem is basically underground so those are called suckers so they reproduce using these suckers so you can see paddy kalanduru banana so those are having such stems and some stems are eatable some stems are eatable you can like you can uh, because why those stems you can consume because it store food in the stem sugar cane is very good example for that it stores right it stores uh, food in the stem and this is soft right that is soft you can eat and kitul is another example which is also storing things in the stem okay so then these are some another examples i said that underground stems turmeric ginger onion potato so these are examples for underground stems potato is also so sometimes you might think this is root no it's not root it is the stem right that is also a type of stem that you can like this uh, onion ginger turmeric so these are underground stems these are not aerial these are underground and so you can see these are Uh, there are some other stems like photosynthesis stems so which can it has chlorophyll so it can generate food instead of because it's you can see the leaves are like needles so leaves cannot do photosynthesis very well so stem is adapted to do the photosynthesis and produce foods so climbers climbers are having climbers we learned in the plant analysis earlier 
climbers climbers are having climbing stems these stems are not strong so it is climbing by wrapping or by using a support it is climbing and so why it's climbing because then it is it can absorb sunlight efficiently so that is why climbers use these stems climbing stems okay so here are some examples pictures you can see so these are actually different type of stems so we are not going to learn about these types but we just learn the examples only the examples only but these types actually uh, like uh, rhizome tuber stolon bulb and uh, wallabilate so these things are actually these are the categories but in grade 8 you are not going to learn about them here so but just tell me which is having tuber stem you know the example tuber stem is they are in yes tuber stem onion. yes onion onion. onion is bulb stem onion having bulb stem tuber stem is they are in potato okay uh, then uh, stolon stem stolon stem stolon stem go to color then uh, volabulate uh, twinning stems volabulate twinning stems these are actually climbers like climbers use that means means like climbers like rhizome 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 yes rhizome stem so no need to know about the type but just tell ginger 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 another example another example for rhizomes turmeric 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 uh, is it stem or turmeric similar to ginger right turmeric also similar to ginger so but is it a root or stem 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 sir uh, but it has a short stem yes turmeric what do you think it is a rhizome yeah right it is example for rhizome type so it has a short stem as well but it's like this you can take that as a example for rhizome okay ginger turmeric like the bulb is they are in bulb is there in onion that is easy so bamboo bamboo plant bamboo plant yes bamboo plant okay just see just try to categorize these things okay try to find examples as much as possible but anyway no in common examples like uh, potato ginger onion beans go to color so that will be enough but try to find more examples right here you can see the examples the rhizome and uh, so there is another one corn bulb tuber these are the types these are called underground and aerial aerial stems are above the ground it's above the ground so many sub aerial so runners runners like go to color and uh, then uh, stolon right suckers you learn about suckers and paddy and all so they are having sub aerial system so those are the stem categorization and roots the next we learn about roots and some tap roots are adapted to store food for an example carrot 
is a tap root system. It's adapted to SO. Uh, and uh, actually, so basic two categories of the root systems are the tap root and fibrous. Tap root system and the fibrous systems. But uh, then uh, basically, you divide it to top type uh, tap root and adventitious. Adventitious, you can divide to fibrous, foliar, and true adventitious, likewise. But basically, in your level, you need to learn about tap root and fibrous. That is enough, right? The cut mudum mul, tap root, and the gummy, the end, candy mul, kela fibrous. So that is enough, right? And so we learn about different, different roots, prop roots. So let's move to the book. We learn about this tap root system, radish, beet, carrot. I mean, tap root system, store in food. And you can see me uh, maniac. So this is adventitious roots, right? Adventitious root. It's not tap root, right? Here, these are tap root. Tap root means main root, mudun mula, right? But these are adventitious. Adventitious, you can see sweet potato. Uh, sweet potato means like uh, batala, right? It's, it's not tap root, it is adventitious roots. Dahlia, maniac. So these things are example for adventitious. And prop roots, prop roots actually are overground again. Prop roots are overground. So some kind of uh, area, sub area, right? So then it's actually supporting the branches. You can see here, money and tree, plat kadol, I mean, prop roots. And still roots, still roots are also there in Mahakadol, Rampa, Rampe, Rampe Kielaki and Rampa, Mahakadol, and uh, Vetakeya, Savin. So that is actually it. the still roots and uh, the prop roots different. We discuss prop roots are coming from the branches, but these still roots are coming from the stem. Okay, right? Prop roots coming from the branches, stilt are coming from the stem. So that's the difference. Uh, then, uh, so uh, not only the uh, climbing stems, so there are climbing roots too. You can see beetle, pepper. So these are having climbing stems, climbing roots, sorry, climbing roots. And aerial roots, aerial roots, vanilla, orchid like things growing above ground, it's not touching the ground even. So those are aerial roots. And some are respiratory. Respiratory means it can absorb oxygen, it can uh, get air, absorb air from the atmosphere. Okay, so this was the summary and propagative roots. We learned propagation is one of the main properties. Uh, it was there in the stems as well. So, and it is there in, uh, it is there in roots too. Curry leaves, for an example, it can propagate. So, when there is a curry, uh, curry leaf plant, so nearby there are many, many other plants. Why? Because the root system is spreaded. So, new, new plants are coming from this root system. So, those are propagative roots. Okay. So, then we learn about them. And Actually, we have completed this chapter last day. So today I just discussed the summary. So what do you need to do as exercise? So try to categorize the plants that you know. Right? So just see your surrounding. What is here and there? Just see your surrounding. If your surrounding is not enough, you can just uh, watch the neighborhood as well. So just look around. So try to categorize the trees and also the try to categorize the plants that you can see, observe around you into the things that we have learned. So which kind of root systems have it and what kind of stem systems have it. So likewise, try to categorize them. Okay. okay. So that is your exercise, right? Right. Uh, Then let's move to the next topic today. On today's topic, we will be discussing about properties of matter. Please write down the heading in your book. Properties of matter. Actually, this is a continuing lesson from grade 6, 7 and now in 8. So we will continue to learn this in future lessons too, in future grades too. So please write down properties of matter. Actually, we have already learned about status of matter in the previous grade and some properties of the matter like uh, uh, so how it change how the status are changing how it become liquid 
how it become gas and how solid to gas conversion gas to solid conversion we learn about that uh, and uh, then liquid to gas gas to liquid so we learn different terms related to that if you can remember so when a solid become when a solid become um, gas what is the name that we call solid become gas for an example carbon dioxide carbon dioxide liquid carbon so not liquid dry ice dry ice is carbon dioxide in solid status when it become gas how we call it yes කොහොමද අපි එකට කියන්නේ solid එකක් ඝනයක් වායු වෙද්දි වාෂ්ප වෙද්දි අපි මොකද්ද කියන්නේ එකට sublimation sublimation exactly then uh, what uh, what do we, uh, what do you call when uh, solid become liquid uh, melting melting solid become liquid melting and liquid become solid uh, freezing liquid to solid freezing okay then liquid to gas evaporation uh, yes very good uh, then uh, gas to liquid uh, condensation condensation okay, good. good that you can remember okay right now so these are the basic properties that we have learned related to the status of matter but now actually we are not going to learn about those status we are going to learn about properties of the matter yani ekak gattama eka padarthayak gattama eke tiyana gatti guna so we just learn about how uh, what is like in like when change in the status what will happen but here we are going to learn about the same status but what are the things what are the related properties and we are going to explore okay so first thing is you are asked to categorize and tabulate item into matter and energy that is easy exercise air is matter water matter ball matter light energy bulk matter matter sound energy table matter they yeah. are matter electricity uh energy electricity is energy as electrons you can take as matter okay. heat energy magnet matter okay so we just want to categorize so here air water board ball table chair magnet space and have mass those are known as matter but light sound heat and electricity is not occupying space and no mass so we call electro those uh, energy that's why i say so electricity you can call matter but electrons so that is kind of smallest unit it is considered that it has a mass so electrons you can categorize into matter but here actually you don't need to think that much of depth just think about electricity current it is source of energy it is an energy so that is how you categorize don't think much deep okay then discontinuous nature of matter so there are three types solid liquid gas solid liquid gas all these all this are having discontinuous nature what is that what is this discontinuous nature okay so shall we write down the things that we have discussed quickly so related to the status of matter i think uh, so that is important the terms that we have learned i'm i'm going to add it to here itself we were discussing about uh, so just write it in front of that otherwise you will forget after sometimes melt 
melt in means yes solid to liquid evaporation a liquid to gas liquid to gas condensation uh, uh, gas to liquid gas to liquid then freezing liquid to solid liquid sublimation solid to gas solid is that all so solid to liquid solid to gas liquid to gas liquid to solid gas to liquid and gas to gas to solid so what is that gas to solid conversion so that is rare gas to solid yes so that is called deposition that is rare okay. that is gas to now we have discussed all right gas to solid Actually, these are not having any intermediate spaces, right? Gas to solid directly. Or you can call D sublimation too, right? Sometimes you can call D sublimation because it's a reverse me. Are you reverse it? It's a D sublimation or a deposition. Okay, these are actually status state take status of matter. State state changes. State changes. Okay, then finish. No, sir. Okay, do. Now let's discuss about, so we have already learned about the stress changes and then, so what is this discontinuousness? So what is the discontinuous nature of this matter? So there was a historical uh, thing that you have, you need to learn. So there are, uh, is a person, actually Greek uh, philosopher, Democritus, uh, Democritus. So he was living in this uh, before Christ, 460, 370 era. So that is even uh, like closer to 2,500 years ago. And he was telling matter is made up with small particles. Right? That time actually there were different philosophers. Philosophers means they were telling their view about the things happening in the world. So I think Aristotle, you have heard of these people. These philosophers were arguing, they were like telling different things. So they were presenting their ideas, scientific founding, and also the philosophical behaviors. Even the religious leaders, they were also treated as philosophers, right? Kind of. And this Democritus, he 
argued that he presented, he said, so matter is made up with small particles. But uh, again, another Greek philosopher, Aristotle, what he was telling, he, he was telling that it is not because not composed of particles. So there are now two, two different philosophies. Therefore, there was a public debate or argument between these two parties and between the Aristotle and uh, Democritus. So then after the particular debate, the idea that matter is matter has a particle nature or matter is just made up with the particles or matter is a particulate in nature. So that argument won the particular time. In the particular time, that argument has more supporting points. So he won and later the scientists proved that yes, matter is made up with small particles. Right? So what is this discontinuous nature of matter? The discontinuous nature is the status of matter exists as a collection of particles and also it, with spaces among them. So that is known as the discontinuous nature. So it is a collection of particles. Potas godakin, chuti chuti, anshu godakin. Particles get anshu. Anshu godakin khadila tiyeno. Evita rakneve madde space asut tiyeno. Eyatara ida tiyeno. Idea discontinuous nature of or particulate nature of matter. So that is the idea. Okay, so what is the particulate nature or discontinuous nature? So without reading that, can you tell? So discontinuous or particulate nature of matter, what is that? Yes. Yes, yes. Come on. Discontinuous nature or particulate nature of matter. So, what is that? Matter is made up with small particles and there are spaces in those particles. So that idea here. So state, uh, status matter exists as a collection of particles. That is also okay. Or you can say matter is made of very small particles. Matter is uh, made of, it's made of very small particles and there are spaces between those particles. So that is known as the discontinuous of particulate nature of matter. Please write down. So then, how we can test this, right? How we can test this? How we can test the particulate nature of matter, right? How we can test the particulate nature of matter? Let's do with solids first. So let's take solid first and let's learn how we can test this, right? So one where practical example is given, uh, in the book. So the simplest way of, you can take a maybe biscuit or you can take chalk something and you can break it into small pieces. First stage, break it into small pieces. So the second piece, maybe two small pieces, then uh, we'll take one piece and again, then take one piece and again, divide it. Take another piece and again divide it. Likewise, you continue to divide it and you can see the smallest piece that you can divide. Still, it's a it's biscuit or still it's chalk. So, 
all the properties related to chalk will be there in the small particle also. So similar to that, if you break or if you divide a biscuit into small, small, small pieces, again, you will observe the same. So that is the particulate nature. And so there is activity given in the book. So to do that, you need uh, either potassium permanganate, which is a colorful solution, or you can use simply uh, some kind of ink. Just use maybe food coloring, anything. You can even use food coloring or some kind of coloring, water color or something, right? Or, or potassium permanganate. So for potassium permanganate, it's difficult to find in the home environment unless you purchase like therefore you can use uh, maybe food color you know some uh, water color related and then what you need to do so take uh, a chalk and you need to keep the chalk actually put into the uh, like watch glass just put it into the watch glass and then uh, or you can use a uh, watch glass or some maybe plate, anything. Take it and then take a piece and keep it in the solution. And so have you done the work that I have assigned, the time lapse in work? I didn't get that. Yes? Sanidhi? Yes, sir. Are time lapse have you done that? Yes. Okay. For this one, you can do a nice time lapse image. Let's say I have a screen, but you can do this using your mobile phone. Okay. Right? So take ink and take a plate. Right? Take a plate and take some ink, maybe watercolor something. Then uh, put the chalk and observe. For few minutes, you can see. I think some. Let, let's see whether is there anyone done similar experiment. Uh, chalk in uh, potassium. Um, I guess this is a common practical. I think. Yeah, we can take this. Now it seems a uh, say time lapse. Oh no, it's only show the diffusion in water. Chalk practically is not there. You can do that. You can do and add that to the uh, add that to the internet. This is like a potassium permanganate diffusion in the water. So you can do the same experiment to see the uh, like uh, the similar property. If you want to observe the same property, which is the discontinuous nature of water, you can still use potassium permanganate to do the same practical. And so you can see this. This shows the diffusion. It's spreading little by little. Right, there is the diffusion that you can monitor, but uh, the other one is not there, right? Yeah, you can do that practical. Keep the chalk on top of this ink and do the practical. Oh, you cannot see that. Sorry, it's my mistake. So here, 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 here sorry. can you see it now? Can, sir. Yeah, potassium permanganate, actually. So you can do the water diffusion practical. This is water diffusion practical. How diffusion of potassium permanganate in water, maybe condis, can call condis, catechylic, you know. That is one experiment that will show the discontinuous uh, nature of uh, discontinuity of uh, liquid. But to see the discontinuity nature or discontinuous nature of solid, you can do the chalk example. Right? So then you can see gradually the ink will spread 
or ink will be there, ink will move up. So why? Because it is discontinuous. Simple. So if it is continuous, it no way to move in, uh, in between. Since it is discontinuous and it has space, that is why this ink is moving up. Right? That is the observation. So that is the decision that we made. Okay, the same practical you can do for water. Here I said that same practical. You can take a piece of potassium permanganate and put it in water. And you can understand and you can see this will diffuse. This will diffuse and it will go here and there and spread into water. Why? Water is also discontinuous. Liquid is also discontinuous. That is why you can see that. And the same practical you can do, but uh, in this time actually for uh, air. But here they have used uh, nitrogen dioxide, NO2. Why nitrogen dioxide? Because it has a color. So nitrogen dioxide, it has a color. That is why nitrogen dioxide is used. It's a color gas. That is the reason why this is used. Or you can simply do this without using nitrogen dioxide. You can do this using... Uh, Carbon dioxide. And you can do this using carbon dioxide. Similar practical was there. You can remember, I think, uh, this is also example for the discontinuous nature. Do we have that practical? Uh, no, not in this book. I think it is... Is it? No, it's about microorganisms. No, it's not here. So similar practical was there somewhere. So let's see in grade six book. Yes. Mm. Not water. You can use carbon dioxide or there are also practical. I'm not sure whether it is in science book, but it's not there here. Just give me a minute. Not here too. Not in here. No. Ah, here, here. You can use a joystick actually. So to, gen to get that, uh, yeah, actually you can use a joystick. Joystick has smoke smoke like foggy so this smoke you can use uh, uh, send it to inside so to a jar similar to that here you can use uh, this is actually if you don't so it seems it's uh, difficult to find nitrogen dioxide again so therefore you can use uh, this joystick and do the same practical good joystick right then yes then you can see it spreading and it is spreading to the, yeah, actually they have used uh, two jar glasses. Similar to that, you can use, uh, fill one jar glass using your stick smoke and then connect another jar glass and you can see, you can observe it is spreading. This is mostly uh, when it is like, uh, uh, if you can use nitrogen dioxide, it's more clear. I'll, I'll tell you how to use, how to uh, get these chemicals and all. And uh, so then you can do the practicals. So, because we, uh, we uh, see, uh, we have recently started our STEAM school. So, they are, we are doing these practicals. So, I'll make, I'll try to enable it to you, but I know that you cannot visit the place. But what I can do is, I can help you doing the practical at home. But anyway, for today, please do the, this, please do this. This you can find, right? On this, you can find. 
so but if if difficult just use uh, you know that uh, ink dust available in shops you can use that or you can use a drop of uh, food coloring that is very simple food coloring i think it's there right if your mother is making cake you know? food coloring you can find food coloring uh, diffusing into water you can do that as well as a time lapse not just a time lapse you can do that as a video even because it is too far it is so, so fast it is diffusing so fast okay the reason okay. is yes here this is the reason the reason is when you put this into the water the eye space so it will move in between space and uh, therefore you can see the food you can see the water glass in different color okay so i think uh, yes so these two practicals you need to do before we start the next part right so what is the practical number one practical number one is this chalk practical practical number you can do a time lapse please send it to me then do the uh, diffusion so this practical use in food coloring and send it to me then do this practical also but just just use your stick just stick and some uh, maybe glass two glasses water glass you can use right normal water glass you two water glasses you can use be careful you know it will break so be careful and but you can do that use water glass so please do these three practicals and send me the uh, time lapse in you know, a small videos to whatsapp because okay. to understand like to discuss about the theory i think you need to do this practical that's why okay, okay. then today so this property so this is what i have explained in the image but i'll explain this part as well as the other properties next day that is not a big lesson right that is a small lesson but we need to use some chemicals in this lesson and chemical reactions therefore so next day i'll be showing you how to get these chemicals and how to do these practicals along right okay with that i'm going to stop for today we'll discuss main in part next day and i'll make sure we can arrange chemicals for the next these practicals i can get these chem chemicals sir you can get these chemicals how yes sir my mother is physics teacher in our school oh this then that's right so you can get that easy yes sir yeah that is great i, I was thinking of sending this uh, from the steam school we okay sir chemicals in the steam school because we are doing the practicals for the physically for these kids then uh, you can find this right okay sir okay and then my alternatives i have to cancel right because you can find the proper chemical no? i just gave you alternatives so then i hope you can find uh, nitrogen dioxide uh, then uh, potassium this is easy potassium permanganate easily you can find and uh, then this is also potassium permanganate so that is easy then do with the proper chemicals no need to use alternatives okay but just use small amount right that's enough right then good night see you all next week Good night sir thank you sir all right